Abba Moletsi Mbeki, who is the deputy chair of the South African Institute of International Affairs. He's also the brother of uh, the former president, Thabo Mbeki. He joins us now. Um, Moletsi, great to have you on with us, sir. Um, look, I've been to these, in, uh, these hijacked buildings. I just know exactly what the conditions are like. It is a difficult situation. Um, but they've become so prolific within the, the CBD of Johannesburg, and it's almost become part of the dynamics of the city. Um, there are families living there. They're living in these inhumane conditions. They're working men and they're working women. But the buildings are run illegally and they're very dangerous. The question is here, where to move these people? What do you think the government has done um, to be able to sort out the situation that's been plaguing the city for many years now? Well, the, 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 the authorities in South Africa, the, the government in South Africa, it is really only nominally in charge of what is going on in, uh, in the country. It's nominally in control of the country. Uh, it's, it's marginally in control of the, of the borders of the country. It has totally lost control of the urbanization of South Africa. There is no town planning except for a small part uh, where the middle class and the upper class live. But for the rest of the, of, of the population, of the working class, of the poor, there is no town planning whatsoever. So it is not surprising that uh, what happened uh, today uh, actually happened. The, 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 the authorities are not in control. Yeah. And in a way, I'm not really interested in the welfare of the poor in South Africa. Um, Moletti, look, the biggest issue remains that even though there is some works underway and the government has said that they're trying to make a plan, but even with, you know, more affordable housing, it's still unaffordable to the large part of the population around half of South Africans are currently on welfare. To give the viewers an indication, that's 350 rand a month. That's around $19 a month. With that kind of, you know, support, you're basically saying to someone, you can only live in an informal settlement. That's just enough to feed one person. So what to do about the unaffordability of life in Johannesburg? Yes, but the unemployment problem it, it is not a standalone problem. It's not a, a, a mysterious problem. It's an outcome of economic policies that the government is driving. That is why we have such high unemployment. The primary economic policies that are being driven by the South African government favor in particular the black middle class and the middle class and the upper class in general. Just to give you an illustration, the public service in South Africa is the highest paid in the world relative to the GDP of the country. Wow. And that is where the new elite in South Africa is employed. So the unemployment that you're talking about is a consequence of the economic policies of this government. So, well, let's see, then the, the question now becomes, has government failed in economic policy as we speak right now? And are they making an effort to change this reality for the majority of South Africans? I agree with you. The, the government's economic policies have failed completely. Our railway infrastructure is in a complete shambles because there is no investment in the railways. So we cannot take our minerals like coal, like iron ore, like manganese or to international markets, which is why there is so much unemployment. And that is the failure. Our so the economic growth rate, the last figure I saw was 0.3%. That is in South Africa. Now, in sub-Saharan Africa, the economic growth rate is above 3%. But in South Africa, it's at 0,3%. So the economic policies of this government have failed totally. And that's why we are getting the catastrophes like you, see, yeah. you saw today 
with people living in the conditions that you saw uh, when you visited a hijacked yeah. building. But well, let's say it's not just the hijacked buildings, right? I mean, you, you know what it's like in informal settlements. We've seen the images. We've experienced it living in Johannesburg. We see the poverty. South Africa is the most unequal country uh, in the world, according to the World Bank. I, I want you to give me a sense of where to from here, because this isn't fixed in a day. These are systemic, fundamental issues that are going to take a very long time to reverse. Well, they take both a long time and a short time. If, if you, the, the present government, it adopted policies uh, 25 years ago that led to the deindustrialization of South Africa. It opened up the economy without recapitalizing our industry. The consequence of that is that our, our manufacturing industry was decimated by imports from Asia. Now that is economic policy. So you, can, you cannot say it will take a long time. It was a deliberate economic policy of trying to deliver cheap goods to the, to the voters for the, for the present government. But this was at the expense of growing the economy. They delivered cheap goods by importing from Asia instead of uh, restructuring our manufacturing sector, which admittedly had been protected uh, under big tariff barriers during the apartheid era. But they had to restructure and gradually open the economy up. Instead of doing that, they opened the economy instantly. Yeah. Our manufacturing sector was wiped out. And that, these are the consequences that you are seeing today. Yeah. And I'm glad because this is a macro picture, right? These are structural issues um, within the economy that is manifesting into what we see today. Um, the unaffordability of decent housing resulting in, in hijacked buildings. Moletsi Mbeki, great to have you with us. So thank you so much for your time.